Hi everyone again. It's either Saturday evening or Sunday morning that you're being a part of our sharing and our fellowship. Dr. Charles E. Clough again from Center of Awakening Consciousness, connected to Church of Truth. And if you'd like to help us, you can click on the what, the site that will allow you to know how you can help us through PayPal or whatever. But we're just glad that we can have this time to share our thinking and hopefully to grow. I've been thinking a lot, um, just got the second shot. Um, all of the people in the retirement center where I am because of uh, my wife's needs have all received the shots. And um, as you get the shots that you feel like you need, all of a sudden all these variants are showing up and you say to yourself, oh, I wonder if the shot that I got, the shots that I got will have anything to do with protecting me from these variants. And people that you read and listen to say, no, they won't. You know, that you're going to have a booster shot or you're going to need a booster shot or some other additional thing. And when we think of additional things, that's the life, isn't it? There is always additional things that we have to think about relate to plan for. One of the concepts that a lot of people have about heaven is that all of a sudden when you're through living here and dealing with everything you have to deal with, you'll go to a place where all of a sudden you don't have to deal with anything. Everything's perfect. You're perfect. You can do everything and so on. That means are we going to reach a place in time when we will have no more experience that we learn and grow from? Most don't think that. Do we become without becoming? Do we happen without happening? Do we achieve something without achieving it? No. Every step we take is growth from our own experience that is helping us to be able to become what we're looking forward to being. There's a quote from Paramahansa Yogananda. Um, he was one of the Indian gurus that came here in the 1800s. He started Self-Realization Fellowship that exists in different places, especially Southern California. He's spoken at our church. And there's one quote that I want to share with you. It says, don't depend on death to liberate you from your imperfections. You are exactly the same after death as you were before. Nothing changes. You only give up the body. If you are a thief or a liar or a cheater before death, you don't become an angel after dying. If it were possible, then we would all go jump in the ocean and become like angels all at once. Whatever you've made of yourself thus far, so will you be hereafter. And when you are reincarnate, you will bring that same nature with you to change. You have to make the effort. This world is the place you do it. And <clears throat> what he's basically saying, without experience and effort on our part to grow, we're not all of a sudden going to be done something else when we leave this place we call Earth. I've attended a lot of funerals, have a lot of services. And it's an easy thing when you're 
at a memorial service or at a funeral, to want to imagine the person that's there who's had a lot of difficulty and a lot of struggles, maybe someone who's not been a good person at all. And everybody's there knowing that the person wasn't a good person, but the service is, the person who's running the service is making the person look like they're, they've really been a good person. But what Paramahansa Yogananda was saying, and supposedly he was able to have connections with the dimension outside of here, is that folks, we are exactly who we are when we leave, that we have been here. Whatever challenges you've had for growth and attitude and all this, you still have to work on. Wow. I don't know whether we like to hear that or not. But that simply means we can't become something without becoming something. We can't grow without growing. So whatever happens after we leave here, it's a continuance of becoming who we can become and who we are. Now that makes sense. Whether you believe in reincarnation and we come here again, or whether you believe that we go somewhere else and there are other places that we advance, it's still the same. We start from where we are in our becoming. Now, how that's important to us, that means that maybe we ought to be a little more serious about what we're becoming here. A little more ready to deal with things about ourselves that we need to work on. That we can't let things go in terms of the persons we are becoming because we think when we leave here, we'll all of a sudden have all these things there. I would love to think that when I leave here, all of a sudden I'm going to be able to play the piano like a profession. Or I would like to be an athlete like somebody that's prepared for years to be able to be. But that won't be what happens. We're going to be where we are, of course, I use physical examples, but we can raise this and move it into other things we'd like to become and like to be. We will be basically who we are. So how can we take a look at who we are? A lot has to do with our attitudes about others and even ourselves. Because when we move on, we want to be loving and caring and sensitive and good people. But we want to be accepting and open. We don't want to go and be closed. We want to be able to think about things. When I was uh, just starting seminary, just married, we took a a challenge of ministry as youth directors in Limor in Central California. Now I was going to school in Covina. So every weekend we would drive from Covina to Limor. It was probably about a three and a half hour drive then, closer to four sometimes, because the grapevine was certainly not like it is now. And on Sunday evenings, we could have stayed and come back Monday morning, but Betty always wanted to come back. We had a small child and she just wanted to come back home. So I would say, okay, now will you stay awake with me to keep me awake on the drive home? Oh yeah, I will. And she would be asleep by the time we get to the freeway. So several times, and, uh, thank God for angel presence and help, I woke up wandering off the road. If you've ever really driven across country in some of those long roads where you just get almost hypnotized by the drive, 
you kind of dull out because it's kind of just the same. And I think sometimes in life we kind of dull out because it's kind of just the same, especially seniors have a challenge about this, have a tendency to do this. That we have to keep our minds awake and alert. And one of the ways we do this is making ourselves think about things and challenge things, even like watching television when you watch the news. That we have ourselves think about how we think about something we're watching. It's easy, I think, sometimes just watch and be zoned out. You're just getting the news, you've seen it before, you're watching it again, and you kind of feel that it's really not something that's affecting us. But maybe we need to think about the news and what's happening with people and other things. We need to, to feel empathy for situations where people are having difficult times. We need to hurt with people we see hurting in different places. We need to ask God why some people can think like they're thinking and do what they're doing. And ask if there's some kind of a way we maybe can help these situations. But if we wake our minds up, we actually change by some of the things we think about. We grow by some of the things we think about. And as we invite the spiritual presence of God to bring consciousness to us about God's presence, then in a lot of these things, all of a sudden, God becomes a part of it. And we wind up starting to pray for situations and people and things. And we ourselves become spiritually involved in some of the hurting that's going on in the world. We can experience a lot more because we wake ourselves up to experience it. And you know what? That we can do. That we can do. When driving in the car late at night, I turn the radio on, I roll the window down, I stick my head out, I yell, scream, and holler, but it'd be sound asleep. Different things I do to keep myself alive. What are things we can do to keep ourselves alive? Talk to ourselves maybe while we're watching TV. Certainly talk to the people around us. But certainly bring God into the middle of a lot of these experiences. God is there already. So that conscious connect just brings another special thing to us and to our spiritual lives. May God help us realize everything we're experiencing becoming here is who we're going to be there. And pray that God will help us grow and develop so that we will be glad for every step we've taken to grow when we move on. And we will be glad. And so it is. I thank God that we can do that. I thank God he's with us all the time to help us think about it. I'm thankful that we can think about it now. And may God help us grow the most we can and to do it with joy. God bless you, and so on.